Just going to show you, I've been out in the garden a lot lately. We've had a fantastic October and I've harvested a lot of food and we're still digging up more lawn. There's still stuff coming in the greenhouse. I don't know if we're going to have a long enough season for what's left, but I still have some pepper plants here and some peppers still trying to ripen up. These are the Black Prince tomatoes and there's still some green ones left on here. I don't know, like I said, if our season's going to be long enough to ripen them up or not, but there's still stuff going on in the greenhouse. And I just removed my Chinese lanterns from this herb bed because they, they were taking over everything and I replanted the uh, oregano and uh, ginger mint here. Uh, most everything has gone out of the raised beds now. We've been eating from it. Actually, what's really funny is there's still some new seeds sprouting from coriander uh, cilantro. So the backyard is pretty much cleaned out. Got a couple of Brussels sprout plants there still. And we dug up all the potatoes. So pretty much everything is cleaned out of here. And we'll get what I usually do is I'll a drill this make all my drills and everything now in the fall so then first thing in the spring I can get right out at the garden and uh, start planting as soon as the soil can be worked and it'll be all ready for me so yeah we're um, going to just uh, add the last of the compost in the uh, old compost bin which is the two-year-old compost bin uh, to the soil here and it's already about oh I would say at least three to four feet deep and then we'll till it in then just drill it out so it'll be all ready for us and i cut back my uh, raspberry canes if you're new to growing raspberries what you have to do is when you're growing your raspberries the canes that fruited cut them out and it's pretty easy to tell which canes fruited and which didn't because when you come down here here's one i forgot i, I didn't cut out when you come down here the ones that are green will stay keep those for the next year and the ones that are brown like this that are completely brown uh, just snip them right off uh, maybe not even an inch three quarters of an inch to an inch from the ground so this one got to come off and uh, so I pretty much got all of the uh, raspberry canes cleaned up and I'll show you what we did out front bit by bit I'm removing the lawn you know, uh, it's better to grow food and herbs than lawn, which just costs you money and time and don't give you anything in return. And plus, you can keep it all pretty. You don't need to uh, worry about your, you know, street appeal because you can have your veggie gardens kept pretty. So I cut out this section for now and we'll extend that and keep extending it. And we tend to walk down through here so I'll leave this area grassed until the last thing and then I'll cut that out and probably put crushed stone or something like that for a walking path but another little tip when you're gardening is keep the paths that you normally walk on because otherwise it's going to be inconvenient for you so just learn over time where it is that you normally walk through to get from one place to another and make those your actual walking paths so we cut up this section here and I got a little young cherry tree and I moved some of my plants that were on the woodland side because I don't want to take out the trees and but the tree roots are just choking out those plants so I have uh, some plants moved into here and I moved those Chinese lanterns which I think are absolutely gorgeous they're like one of my favorite flowers so we still have a ton of veggies and it's October I brought in about 10 pounds of carrots, probably seven or eight pounds of turnip, and a few pounds of potatoes as well. And there's still potatoes in the ground here, and there's still carrots. Now, remember I told you about the parsnip and how you have to leave it until um, the next year to bolt to get parsnip seeds? Well, this is what I'm doing with these carrots. And actually, these carrots weren't growing in this bucket. Uh, when I thinned out my carrots, the little baby carrot thinnings, I... Um, I just planted them in the bucket and I said okay if they take they take and if they don't well you know they were going to be wasted anyway so these were literally just like a little hair and I poked my finger down and I stuck them in and they grew here so I'm going to leave them here and I'm not going to harvest these ones because I'm going to let them go through till next year and then they'll bolt 
and then I'll have a ton of carrot seeds so I won't have to buy any carrot seeds and there's a little parsley plant back here as well so um, yeah you can use your thinnings and move them to a new spot and there's actually nice sized carrots growing on this but like I said I had enough carrots anyway so these are going to be for seeds so I'm going to leave these alone what we have left in here is my broccoli is going to seed and talking about collecting seeds before so when your broccoli goes to seed you'll see these flowers come out like this and it'll be all different stages and you could still pick off some of these little broccolis and, and they send out a lot of them send out these shot side shoots which are perfect for salads so you can leave your broccoli in the ground right up until it gets destroyed with frost and pick all the little side shoots so after it flowers you'll notice these pods and this will come out wherever a flower is these long little pods and these pods are filled with broccoli seeds now this is an immature pod you want to wait till it's swollen and actually starting to dry let me see if i can find a mature pod well the ones over here are a little more mature you can see they're bigger and like they're really tight you can feel the seeds like filling them out inside but i'll still leave them for another week or so and then the same as any other seeds i'm going to pick them and hang them upside down in a dry airy place and then I'll just shuck off the uh, outer part let me show you one here I'll just pull some off I'll shuck off the outer part and these seeds they, by that time will be dried up inside and they will be brown or blackish brown so right now they're still green so they're not good to uh, to pick yet they're not a viable seed so don't pick your seeds too early or they won't be viable so I still have some bolting lettuce so here's how lettuce will look when it's going to seed and you'll see these little tiny yellow flowers almost look like a weed after the little yellow flowers the bottoms will bulge out like this after the flower goes and there'll actually be some little fluff and when you open up one of these uh, you can take them in the same thing hang them upside down dry them and then uh, let me just pick this with my other finger you can see the fluff in there a little bit of uh, fluff inside and all that fluff is attached just like a dandelion it's attached to uh, seeds inside here so you can pull that open and there there's probably I don't know there's probably 30 40 um, seeds inside of this one little pod it's hard to do it one-handed well here you go there you go see a little seeds in there that's your lettuce seeds so you don't have to purchase any lettuce if you leave your lettuce I know it looks it doesn't look the prettiest but it's not the ugliest thing either so you can just let them all bolt wait till they flower then wait till the flower the bottom of the flower here what the flower is attached on to the flower will disappear and this will bulb out like this one here it'll get fatter and then your your seeds will be viable so these are still not quite viable yet you want to take this plant in you can either leave the root attached just pull it out or uh, snip it off and hang it upside down until it's completely dry and all those seeds are dried up inside what else i have here is cabbage that never came to anything but i love these big cabbage leaves so all of the leaves of things like the leaves of the broccoli all the tough leaves that you have the leaves of kale the leaves of these big leaf cabbages they're all great for making those kale chips I posted a video before and i'll post it down below again how you can make kale chips so then once you dehydrate them and have your flavor on them and they're fantastic anybody who's on a diet and you just love that crunchy crunchy kind of food use up all these green leaves and make chips out of them and they last for a very long time just in a paper bag so you can have you know some greens through the winter or even for that matter uh, you can take them in and just dehydrate them without any flavorings put on them and then you can crumble them and add them to soup there's no need to waste any food especially when you're growing organically and you want to uh, take advantage of your best food now these are celery this is just a leaf celery that I grew from the celery seeds, the herb, from Mountain Rose Herbs. And I just planted those in amongst everything and, and they're actually extremely flavorful. They're great in soup and they're great as a little, just a little hint of celery flavor for your salads. Um, I still have a few squash hanging on here. And cauliflower. I don't know if we're going to be lucky enough for the cauliflower to bolt. 
but I left one little piece of cauliflower on the cauliflower plant and she's starting to bolt here now but I don't think uh, we're going to get a long enough season for that to seed but I'm going to give it a shot and see if it'll survive until it goes to seed and it's the same thing that's going to produce an actual flower and then there'll be seeds inside that but it's too early really to show you. Here's another little baby broccoli. These are like I said they're great just pinch them out and they're great for in salad or just eating in the garden. Okay, so I still have lots of more lettuces that are bolting. Dill, beautiful dill. I still have some nasturtium flowers. Again, you can eat the leaves and the flowers and the seeds. How pretty is this to have in your salad? I harvested all my grapes. I had to come out and get them a little early because the blue jays got into them. But there's still a few left here. Oh, I just left them for the birds. They can have uh, the few odds and ends little grapes. But I, I harvested quite a few off of this purple grape. And not so many off the green grape. And I have to say, uh, it's amazing that I'm even growing grapes outdoors in Newfoundland. And they were an interesting flavor. I almost tasted like... I remember when I was a kid, you'd have those sour gummy candies, like they're sour and they're sweet at the same time, and they have a really, really um, strong grape flavor, like a concentrated grape juice. So they were really good. And I have uh, what I didn't eat put in the freezer so that I can uh, use them in smoothies. And here's my calendula. You can just take them at this stage and pull the petals off and dry the flower petals if you want to use them in your lotions or in the bath or anything like that very soothing healing plant and when the flower loses its petals it'll start to look like this and this little seed head can be popped right off and it's covered in in piles of these seeds and again you need to dry them so you want to leave them on and always pick your seeds on a dry day it's if it's just rained or it's damp uh, there's more risk of you getting mold in between um, the seed pods so pick them on a dry day here's one with a ton of seeds coming out on it here now and those little strange little half moon shaped they're the seeds they're actually the calendula seeds and they produce a ton of seed so you can collect some of the flowers they flower at all different stages and they're all different uh, shapes and colors and they're mostly orange this year. I had some bicolor previous years. But anyway, like I said, you can, you can gather them on different stages. You can gather the seeds and you can also just gather the petals. Put them in a basket in your window ledge or something. Uh, that's all I do is use a basket in a sunny window ledge and they dry out really vibrant and beautiful and you can put them in bath salts or anything like that. All right, so same thing as over on this side. We just have calendula. And most of it on this side is going to seed. We've been reducing the lawn size again. Another little flower bed added in. Eating a lot of food from the garden. Sorry, I'm still chewing on a piece of broccoli. Um, and yeah, so it's really great. And, and you don't need to have a garden. We got a half an acre here. But you don't need to have a garden this size to grow a lot of food. In one of these fish boxes, which you can usually purchase probably for like $15 each, this is a huge fish box and I just drill some holes up through the bottom or sometimes they already come with holes in them and in this fish box I actually grew two big heads of lettuce right here. I'm growing some celery here, a broccoli, a cauliflower and I can't remember what I had in the back but it, you know you could grow another two lettuces so you can have a whole salad in one box which you could put on a patio, on your step, on your deck or you know, uh, there has to be some little bit of a space on the side of a driveway or anything like that. And you can grow a lot of food in just one little box. So you don't even need a big garden and you can garden. And, and even in the winter time, you can grow some herbs in your, and maybe microgreens or small salad greens in some pots on a window ledge if you have a nice sunny window ledge. So anyway, that's it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.